While science and technology are playing an ever-increasing uh, role in our lives, be it at home, at work or in our leisure activities, there has remained a poor public awareness of science and its opportunities for Ireland, our economy and for our people. However, I hope that the one thing that comes out of co the COVID-19 pandemic is a greater appreciation of the need for independent scientific advice in policy and decision making in this country. Minister, science in Ireland is at a crossroads and the decisions made by the government over the next 13 months will have the potential to be transformative in terms of both scientific and societal impact for a generation to come. We are also at an economic crossroads with complex challenges facing Ireland in a post-Brexit, post-pandemic environment and in an era where corporate tax will no longer be the incentive to encourage foreign direct investment into Ireland. So establishing an innovation-based economy is even more important than ever before. The Government's Creating Our Future initiative is a very positive and significant uh, step forward and is encouraging members of the public to provide their ideas on what public research should be funded to make Ireland a better country for everyone. This process of engagement with the public, particularly focusing on research co-creation, is innovative, but it must be the start of a process and not just an end in itself. For this initiative to be truly a success, it's important uh, that the public engagement is a two-way process and that we find innovative ways to respond to communities and individuals so that we are not just capturing ideas, but we're also communicating back on what we're doing with those ideas and what solutions have emerged as a result of these ideas. Now, the next big decision by government is on the appointment of a new chief scientific advisor. This is a critical appointment, not just because of the individual who takes up the post, but more importantly, how that position is set to be structured and resourced within government. We must have a decision-making process. Uh, we must have a government decision-making ecosystem based on a critical analysis of all the options and that this can only happen with the establishment of an independent, well-resourced scientific uh, advisory office. The remit of the Office of the Chief Scientific Advisor needs to be expanded to become a three-lane bridge uh, between policymakers and science, providing independent evidence-based insights into Irish the Irish policy-making system, including both government and the Oireachtas. And these three lanes have to be Cabinet and Science, Government Departments and Science, and the Oireachtas and Science. Minister, to nail my colours to the mast, so to speak, I don't agree, nor have I ever agreed, with the view that the Director General of Science Foundation Ireland and the Chief Scientific Advisor Post should be one and the same. This is not a reflection on Mark Ferguson, but I previously described the amalgamation of the true roles in this House as akin to the appointment of the CEO of the Health Service Executive as the Chief Medical Officer to the Government. This would not work in the health area and will not work in the science area either. That was seven years ago. And I believe that many can now fully relate to my analogy back then. And I'm glad that the Minister has confirmed here tonight that the one individual will no longer hold both offices. It's vital that if government is to rely on the advice of the Chief Scientific Advisor, particularly in relation to a public crisis, just as we've seen with the COVID-19 pandemic in health, then this office needs to be seen as independent and credible in public perception, or else the decisions taken by government based on such advice will lack the authority it requires to secure public support. The Chief Scientific Advisor must also be a bridge between government departments and science. Minister, while there are plenty of doctors in the Department of Health, there are very few technical postgraduates throughout our public service. 
we are far too reliant on external advice, which is important but must complement expertise within government, not replace it. Every time a complex decision has to be made in government or by a government department, a team of consultants are, are hauled in who are accountable to absolutely nobody. We exclude direct advice from experts in specialist fields who are funded by the public and whose individual academic reputation is based on providing impartial advice. Instead, we splash out more public funds to get a consultant's interpretation of that evidence, evidence that the public has already paid for in research grants. Right across our public service, we need focused incentives for those within the public service to upskill and to attract analytical skills into government departments, thus providing a better understanding of technical advice. This needs to be stitched into the public service reform programme or, or else we'll continue to pay lip service to reform. We've already we have, have to allow the public service policy makers an opportunity to step outside their daily role through secondment into academic institutions to undertake specific pieces of policy analysis informed by the professional expertise. Without the ingraining of critical thinking into public service reform, we are just waiting for another groupthink disaster to happen. And sadly today, we're all paying for that approach to our banking system. Science and Technology Policy Fellowships also provide opportunities to outstanding scientists and engineers to learn firsthand about policy making and to contribute their knowledge and analytical skills in the policy realm. Fellowships for research should help them uh, to, to gain a better understanding of how government works and how decisions are made. The research community needs to appreciate that policy makers need the best available advice at that point in time, not the perfect result in some academic paper in five years' time. This two-way flow of expertise, connecting science with policy, will foster a network of science and engineering leaders who understand government and policy making and who are prepared to develop and execute solutions to address our societal problems. Finally, the Chief Scientific Advisor must establish an Oireachtas Office of Science and Technology, just like the Parliamentary Budget Office, which, as you know, was established after the financial crisis as an independent specialist and impartial financial budgetary uh, information analysis and advisory service to the Oireachtas. Sadly, today there are many instances of alternative th thinking here in Dáil Éireann just being shot down and often condescendingly so just because they're not in line with the agreed narrative uh, on the issue. We must remind ourselves that the only solution or answer uh, being presented, when one solution or answer is only being presented to Parliament, that's bad, a bad decision, uh, makes uh, bad decisions in relation to democracy. We need a proactive science advisory service that scans the political and technical horizon and provides summaries of rigorous research evidence. In the UK, this is done by the Parliamentary Office of Science and Technology. The, that office has pioneered rapid mobilisation of, of the research community to support the parliamentary scrutiny by government uh, of government actions around COVID-19 in the UK. Interestingly, that office carried out uh, research in 2017, finding that uh, the uh, parliamentary system in the UK only infrequently submitted, uh, 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 availed of scientific advice on committee inquiries. I suspect the same happens here as well. Now more than ever, the Oireachtas needs to properly scrutinise government decisions with empir empirical evidence. It is in all our interests to strengthen the parliamentary democracy and the fundamental goal in this is to use diverse research evidence uh, in all our parliamentary activities. Thanks. Thankfully, we've started this with the process, process with the appointment of six fellows uh, through Science Foundation Ireland. And that's commenced this process. Now we need to build on that very first step. Garamila Mahagod.